Oh yeah, I got the jacket out for this one. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Designer Dave, and today I want to talk about corporate necrosis again. Now, this is something that I have a video on already. I talked about uh, EA and Mass Effect Andromeda, and I talked a, quite a bit about corporate necrosis and how it impacts companies and studios and, and games in a negative way. But I want to go more into detail about what corporate necrosis is, because I don't think I I did define it loosely, but I didn't really explain why it's so bad or <clears throat> how it develops and becomes worse over time. So, so imagine a traditional game development studio that you know and love. <laughs> you can you can pick any which one you want, but um, <clears throat> so back in the day when they were doing the good stuff, right? The that studio was around like. 200 people with maybe across two teams, right? <clears throat> maybe three. So each individual team is like maybe 30 to 60 to maybe a hundred at most people. And those people all kind of know each other. They all communicate pretty well with each other. If an artist has an issue with something, then they can go talk to the designer. If the designer needs something from programming, they can go talk to the programmer. Communication is open and everyone's responsive and everyone is contributing to things. So they all feel like they're part of the product. And thus you get a, a better end product that way because of that communication and everyone being part of the same expression of love of that game. So, but then these companies, they, they get larger. <laughs> Dissemination of information becomes more precarious. Things trickle down less, communication starts to break down, people don't know each other as well. Some teams never even meet, they're in completely different areas of the studio and programmers never go into the artist area, artists never go to talk to the designers and things sort of start to fall apart. Maybe only the leads are communicating and then eventually maybe the leads aren't communicating at all and it's just the director who's going in between all the teams. I don't know, it depends on the studio, but these, these communications definitely start to break down and I know this for a fact because I. I know people who work in the industry, but also because the game's quality reduces as that occurs. Uh, so I interpretation of how these things are expressed from the top down can change depending upon the mood of the team and, and who's receiving the message and the context of what else is going on at the studio. It's no longer direct communication. You're no longer close enough that you're all sort of feeling the same way about things. So, so let's say like leadership wants to announce, hey, now we've got free snacks down in the snack room. And, you know, they think that's a big win for the company. It's going to improve morale. Well, that's not a big win if you're an employee down at the, the lower levels of the company and you're barely scraping by on a sub-living wage. You're living three people in an apartment <laughs> that uh, that you don't even know. That. <laughs> like you're, you're living on the couch, you're, you're couch surfing, like that sort of thing goes really wrong for those people they get they can become very bitter and and that expression goes into the game in what they're doing and often those are the people who are closest to the execution of the game so like level designers and things like that who for whatever reason often get shit on uh, but then as the the company grows even larger it becomes more destructive towards its own development teams so uh, this is an effort to increase profit margins for the shareholders. So imagine uh, layoffs. <laughs> it becomes a quick and easy way for the for the CEO to totally, who's totally disconnected from the development of the game, uh, typically in these situations, and just go, let's increase profit margins for this fiscal year. Lay off 800 employees. Boom, they're gone. Some of them at random, some of them chosen by leads, some of them chosen by the director, who knows who's making the decisions at that point. And in many of these situations, these could be some of their best employees, but uh, they are bitter because of their pay situation. <laughs> but then the CEO goes, look, we got more money. Things have improved. Fiscally, we are great. Yay. But the expression of that in the games is going to be a downward spiral. So the game development becomes uh, more difficult and dangerous. How attached to the product can you really be if you know you might get fired at any point? Just as an example, why would you care about something that's really just a job? It's just a job now. It's no longer a game you love developing. And, and that is what I've 
seen and heard from people uh, working at EA, for example, but also at other studios that I, I won't, I will, <laughs> will remain nameless for the moment. Um, it's just, so in these studios, as they grow bigger, the more people that are above you in the order of things, the less likely as an individual developer that you, you're, growing, you're going to be heard. And the less you are heard, the less your ideas get into the game, the less you are interested in the development of that game, the less the quality of your work. And when you go to implement some of these ideas that, that have come down from the top, you don't necessarily know why these are being implemented. Maybe there's documentation of it, but these days, you know, with the, with the corporate structure of it, maybe there isn't. Uh, or maybe you just get the bare outline of it without any explanation or context as to why this feature is being put in. And maybe you don't think it's a great idea, but you have no way to express that or go against it. It's been delivered to you. It's now yours to implement, but you don't really get to change it in any way, shape or form other than, other than how you, how you implement it. And when when you implement it, you're not going to understand it. So people are implementing things without understanding and you get terrible features out of it. And that's just, that's just how it goes at these larger studios. When you have like 300 people and, you know, one creative director or, you know, maybe they have uh, maybe you're a UI guy and there's the UI lead and then the creative director, and this came down from the creative director. The creative director talked to the UI lead, the UI lead expresses it to the UI designer or implementer, and who knows? Who knows what happens in that telephone process? And everything becomes mired down this way until you end up with basically EA, where the running gag is still to this day that you know that's where developers go to retire because you don't have to think anymore, you just implement whatever the producer tells you to. Um, and then there's another layer, especially these days where everything has become data analytics driven. So it's soulless. It's like micromanaged by middle managers who read off of a data sheet that this particular feature gets the most button presses without any context as to why. And then you're asked to implement a feature that causes that to happen more and you don't know why, <laughs> and you don't know what the purpose of it is. And it might not even be correct uh, because it's an interpretation of data. And as I've, I haven't done a full video on it yet, but I've expressed several times that data analytics is sort of its own form of wizardry and guessing. <laughs> um, but at a lot of these big studios, the directors and stuff have never, they haven't worked on a game themselves personally maybe their entire career. I've met design directors who have like never actually made a game themselves. And they keep getting these di design director roles because they had the design director title previously. And that's at, at these larger studios, they look for that pedigree. Oh, how many years have you been a design director? They're not looking for someone who's actually a good design director. They're looking for someone who has years of experience as a design director. And those are very different things. Um, some of them have never have, haven't played games in, in years and don't even know what the latest games are. So it's, it, I'm getting into personal frustrations here with, uh, with uh, design director positions. But anyways, the point of this is that like corporate necrosis is this rot at the root of these companies as they grow. And as they grow too big, the, the vision keepers can't get that vision all the way down to the bottom anymore. And at some point, all those cells of people on the teams, uh, like, you know, the level design team or the, you know, design team or whatever, they become cut off from the fundamental nutrients that they need to care about what they're working on. And their feedback then doesn't flow back up. It's... You don't have time. The vision's been expressed. This is how we're moving forward. The production schedule's already been set. Start implementing. And since their feedback doesn't flow up, they're now in the position of having to implement things that A, they don't care about, and B, they don't necessarily understand the context of the vision around. Now that can be chalked up to bad communication from the design director. And I have seen studios where there are very good design directors who are very good at communicating their vision and getting everyone on board, but that is a rarity. That is not the norm. Um, so as that information 
doesn't flow up and the trickle down of information is very bad the cells die <laughs> and eventually they become malignant <laughs> and then the whole studio is rife with cancer <laughs> and that in a nutshell i suppose is corporate necrosis so i hope you enjoyed that explanation of why maybe your favorite studios are not functioning and producing the things that uh, you remember them producing in the past and no longer creating things that you love maybe now you understand why um and if i don't see you later good afternoon good evening and good night